Hi, welcome to this DCP web tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a PayPal buy now button and add it to your website. Okay, let's go ahead and open up the web browser. So I'm already logged into my PayPal account. So you need a PayPal business account. So you want to set yourself up with a PayPal business account if you want to follow this tutorial. In this tab over here, I've just built a basic website using Elementor. So it's just a basic cleaning website, right? So we want to add a PayPal button to this website so people can make a purchase. Maybe you have something like uh, you know, this here, automotive uh, car cleaning service, you've got residential service and you've got like commercial. So you might have three little buttons down here or if you're selling books or if you're selling cakes, whatever it is you're selling in your business on your website, you may want to place a buy now button in order for people to purchase that particular product or service. So let's go ahead and click on this PayPal here. We're going to go to get paid options. So click it here, get paid, and we're going to go to the PayPal buttons here. So when you click there, there's lots of different buttons. I'm going to make different tutorials explaining each one of these, but today we want to focus on the buy now button. So let's go ahead and click on the buy now button option here. And it will take a few seconds to load up. It's going to give us an interface where we can fill out information in order to add that button to our website. So the first thing it asks us is what type of button is it? Is it a buy now button, an add to shopping cart button, a donation, a subscription or automatic billing button? So I'm going to show you these in different tutorials. So let's just focus on buy now. So when you click the buy now button, it will take you straight to PayPal where you can make purchase for this particular product that you're promoting, right? So on this website, you can see there's a, like a car cleaning service, there's a residential home service, there's a commercial one. Let's just make some fictional buttons that we can place here and test it. Let's start off with car. So if we just write in here, item name car cleaning service, and you can give it any ID you want. So normally I use an acronym like CCS-01, car cleaning service-01. So the next thing it asks us for is the price. So you've got a drop down menu here with lots of different currencies. If you're based in America, do USD. Depending on, you know, if you're based in Europe, you might use euros, but I'm in sunny old England. So I'm going to use GDP, uh, British pounds. And what would a car cleaning service cost? We can say that it costs, I don't know, 15 pounds, for example, right? Then it says, um, do you want to add some other options? Like add a drop down menu with price options, add a drop down menu without price options. Uh, so you can just like have a drop down menu that gives the customer options to select from, but without any um, uh, pricing change. But we might say um, this option here, right? So the name of the drop down menu, let's just say in here, select car cleaning. Let's move that out of the way. Level, right? So level one is basic car clean that's 15 pounds then the next one is full car clean let's write outside right outside the car uh, full car clean let's say full outside car clean and this is basic outside car clean yeah and in here we might say it's 20 and then we'll copy this one paste it below full outside and inside car clean and that will be 25 so if you don't have a drop down menu you don't need to tick this option and they can just pay using that one service i'm going to show you this button and how it functions so we're going to click done and now you can see there's a drop down here with different options so it's not there's the default 15 pound there's 20 and so you can select a level of service let's say yeah then it says um, add a drop down menu without any pricing. So um, this might just be something like day of the week, right? Then we might have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We can add more options, right? Thursday, Friday. Let's just say that we don't do weekends for whatever reason. So we do Monday to Friday. So um, let's just see if we click done, then we'll see day of the week. So we want this cleaning service on this particular day. So this, these, both of these are optional. You don't have to have them, but I'm just showing the functionality. Then it says uh, add text field. So you can add a, like a text field. And in here we might write something like uh, 
model of car and then we'll click done so now they can enter the model of their car whether it's a Ferrari or Lamborghini whatever it might be um, then it says add another text field so we don't really want to add another text field we can change the appearance though so we can make it a smaller button we can have it with um, with the um, credit card and debit card options underneath but we'll kind of get rid of that then the country and the language for the button so we're going to leave it as United Kingdom and then select button text so it can either be buy now or pay now so either one we just leave it as buy now and you can if you want is um, upload your own buy now image so you can you can save a button you can create a button save it on your WordPress website as an image and you can copy the path to that image and paste it in here but it should really be on HTTPS right it should really be on a secure URL but for now we're just going to leave it as buy now that's quite a recognizable color for PayPal as well so it might be a good option postage you can put postage in here so if you're selling I don't know cake for example you've got the product price there and you want to have a separate price for the postage you can do that um, merchant account ID you can learn a little bit more about this but use your secure merchant account id rather than your primary email address so this is probably the best option then it says uh, track inventory so in here you can actually track your inventory so if you're selling product and you're running out of stock or you want to track your stock you can actually track it through using these options here and you can have like messages pop up to say that this item is out of stock and so forth right and then customize advanced features um, uh, let's see do you want to let your customer change all the quantities we can say no or they can order it for more than one so you can say to them okay you can order it for two cars for example right but we're going to say we'll, we'll leave it as yes now uh, leave it on yes option so we can check that and test it can customers add special instructions to your message yeah why not let's allow them to add a little special instruction maybe they'll say is uh, use a certain type of product or something like this uh need customer postal address well we need their address because we need to go and visit them to cut clean the car or deliver the product take the customer to this url where when they cancel the checkout or take them to this url when they finish their checkout so at the moment as default um it will just show a message thanking the customer for their for their payment right but you can tick these options and take them to a specific page on your website to say that you've cancelled the order or you've uh, um, confirmed the order. So let's just go into Elementor quickly or go into WordPress. Now let's go to pages. And as an example, let's just create a confirmation page. So this is like success, right? So let's just copy success here. In theory, this might not work because um, this is running from a local machine. So I'm not sure if this is actually going to work but we'll try uh, success let's just um, publish this I'm not 100% sure if this is going to work because I'm running it from a local computer I'm running it from a in my previous tutorial I showed you how to set up this local software to run WordPress locally but in here we'll just type in let's just type in thank you for your payment just something simple and we just update it and obviously you put something a bit more useful than that uh, but let's go to uh, let's tr let's try and actually view that page let's just come out of here and let's just go to view and we have a little very basic page just saying thank you right and that's all it is so we'll copy this URL and we'll paste it into here but I'm not 100% sure if it's going to work so uh, normally you would have it on your proper domain name right this is a local running website so normally you have it on your proper domain name um, let's see use a line break between each variable variables will appear in your button html code not too worried about variables um, you can do like other stuff um, add extra variables into your into your code in case you want to capture some other information but this should be pretty good so let's go ahead and click create button and what we'll do is while it's creating that button let's just move this to the side and we'll go into this folder and let's just create a quick little notepad file in here and we'll call this PayPal buttons and what we'll do is copy this code and let's just write above it car cleaning and we'll paste in that code so this is the code that we need to now add to the website in order to display the options for the button so let's go ahead and do that okay so let's go ahead and copy this code here we're going to copy all of this code and we can maximize this browser window and go back to the website so we're editing this with Elementor you can use similar processes if you're using Wix or some other type of platform 
or using a different theme the goal is to add the HTML code to the website so that we can display this button and this particular button I want to display it just below uh, this section here where it's talking about booking uh, or or the car service itself it's an automobile here right car so let's go ahead and edit with Elementor so we click edit with Elementor and a similar process with Divi or any other type of film build, theme builder um, or page builder system, right? So the website will load up. Let's scroll down to that section where we want to add it here. And I need to look for HTML because the code that we have here is in HTML. So we can just copy this. This is the HTML code. You don't really need to copy this title. That's just for reference what it is, right, in the notepad file. You can save this. And in here, we're going to type in HTML because we want to add some HTML. I want to drag and drop that just below the tick boxes here. Drag and drop it here. And I'm going to paste in the code. And now we can see the button displayed here. And we can click update. Right. And now we can go ahead and click the preview button right here. And that will allow us to see the website preview with that button installed. Let's check that. Let's just make sure that button functions in a correct way. So if I scroll down, you now see the options here with the buy now button. So I can select the different options here. I can select the date or the day, and then I can just type in Fiesta or something and click buy now. And that information that I've typed in will be stored and presented to you when someone makes a payment. So here you can see I'll, I'll give you the option to change the quantity. So car cleaning service, 25 pound. Maybe I want to clean 10 cars. If you're good enough to have 10 cars, then well done. You know, you can probably afford a full time cleaner to clean your cars. But I'm just like, I've got, I've only got one car, so just one car. We'll click continue. And then it's going to ask me to put in my details. So I'm not going to do that because it's only a test, it's just a little test. Um, but if you click here and put in your password, then you can run through PayPal and make the payment, or you can click pay by debit card or credit card. And then you can fill in the information here and uh, you can pay via um, debit card or credit card and there you can see the amounts, right? So that's nice and simple. The customer will make payment, you will receive an email confirming that payment's been made and then you can go and deliver the product to them because you're gonna have all of their billing details and their delivery details, right? The information for the for the billing. Um, it says send my, send, uh, this is billing details, send to my billing address, right? So the the, uh, whatever the product is or the services that you're going to be providing. So let's go ahead and close this and we can exit Elementor for the minute. So we can just go to view page and then we see the page with that particular button. So there are some other options just to have a single button. You can just literally have a buy now button here rather than having all of these options above it. So there are some few other options with an um, PayPal, uh, but it's just a case of going back to PayPal and there's a couple of different things you can do here so you can go to my save buttons and that will show you all your existing buttons that you've created like this one you can create a similar button so if you click this it will create a button and copy all the information and you can go ahead and create a new one or you can start from a blank one just a blank uh, brand new button right so depending on what options you want to take next you can click on one of these options that will allow you to create a new button. So for example, if I want to create a different button, or imagine if I want to create a button that's exactly the same as this, but had different drop down options, right? Different information, then it would make sense that I say, uh, create similar button, and then it will re replicate it. Use the button you just created as a template for another button. You can just click that, it will create exactly the same logic here, but then you can just change the information in the drop downs for residential and then do another one for commercial. So that's how you go about creating a PayPal buy now button. This one's a bit more advanced because it's got these options in here, but in general, that's how you do it. So let's go ahead and minimize this browser window. We can close down this little notepad file. That's the end of this tutorial. I hope you find it useful. If you have any problems or you have any issues, don't forget you can reach out to me in the commenting on uh, YouTube or Facebook. That's the end of this tutorial. I hope you find it useful and I look forward to seeing you in the next DCP web tutorial.